how can storms three times the size of Earth get so big and last for over 300 years? Jupiter's weather is a maelstrom of swirling clouds, lightning storms, and massive hurricane-like vortices. For the Galileo team, it's a mystery. On Earth, weather like this is powered by the heat of the sun. But Jupiter is 500 million miles away, so there must be some other source of power. Its most famous feature is the Great Red Spot, a storm whose clouds tower five miles above the atmosphere and plunge deep into a chemical soup below. The red spot is red uh, because of uh, the chemicals uh, that are trapped there in the center of the red spot uh, have been baked and cooked by ultraviolet light and have turned red. Astronomers have watched the great red spot for at least 300 years on Earth. Even the biggest storms only last about two weeks. So how does the biggest storm in the solar system, three times wider than the Earth, get enough energy to rage unchecked for centuries? Scientists believe smaller thunderstorms could hold the answer. In order to solve the mystery, they had planned to video the Great Red Spot and other smaller storms in action. Understanding the mechanics of these turbulent weather systems, the Galileo team hoped to reveal the source of their power. With the high-gain antenna out of action, this simple solution won't be possible. The team back at Mission Control need a new approach. Instead of making long, continuous movies, we made uh, three-step movies. Uh, you, you watch the red spot, you come back a few hours later, you watch it again, and, and, and so it's just a three-step movie instead of a continuous movie. Galileo homes in on a turbulent area of small white spots caused by what they think is convection or rapidly rising air. If these are storms, they will need to find proof. They need to locate another of Jupiter's most extraordinary features. Lightning bolts, a thousand times more powerful than on Earth. But these are only visible at night. Jupiter is 11 times bigger than the Earth. It's, it's, it's really big. If you look at this uh, globe, you can see a few intense white-colored spots, uh, small intense white-colored spots. And uh, when we got around behind Jupiter and looked at the night side, it was those uh, very white colored spots that had the lightning in them and no place else. So uh, that identified where the thunderstorms were. Having identified the thunderstorms, the next step is to find out whether these small white spots can grow into larger ones. Galileo is in the right position at the right time. There were some uh, white ovals that formed in the 1930s three of them, and they had been around for 60 years when suddenly two of them merged. Galileo watches as two of the ovals merge to form a larger, more powerful storm. Two years later, the third oval also merges, forming one large storm in a belt below the Great Red Spot. And then it had slowly turned red, uh, so that it resembled the Great Red Spot, but not quite as big. Nicknamed the Red Spot Junior, observations of its birth may also help to solve the mystery of where these large storms get their energy. Jupiter's storms are cannibalistic. They swallow smaller storms. This is how something as large as the Great Red Spot came into being. It's like a food chain where the big fish eat the little fish and the little fish eat smaller fish. And the primary harvesters of energy on Jupiter are the little thunderstorms. This accounts for the source of all the energy, but it doesn't explain why these vast storms last so long. Conditions on Jupiter are so turbulent that the storms should blow themselves apart. On Earth, vortices such as tornadoes soon die out, but on Jupiter, vortices last for years. Jupiter is the fastest spinning planet in the solar system, 
turning 22 times faster than Earth. Ironically, scientist John Arno thinks this rapid spin explains the stability of Jupiter's storms. In rapidly rotating systems, vortices can be long-lived. It's very surprising. Normally, we would think they'd shred themselves. They never do. What we've learned from these missions is that it's very coherent, is that it's very stable. When two different colored dyes are mixed in a rotating jar of water, the results are startling. At first, what looks like it's going to be a mess quickly turns out not to be a mess. Instead, we generate two large-scale vortices that you'll see are going to be very long-lived and coherent. And this is the idea. In rotating fluid systems, when you try to mix them instead of just destroying any dye signal or any signal in the fluid, you get large-scale structures, similar to a great red spot. Galileo has revealed why some storms get so big and last so long. But scientists are still mystified by Jupiter's most distinguishable characteristic, its parallel red, white, and brown stripes. It was assumed that some colors are rising gases and others sinking. But Galileo finds this may not be true. Although its atmosphere is hundreds of miles deep, only the surface layer is visible. Here, high-velocity winds blow in opposite directions, causing these multicolored patterns to be dragged across the surface. The colored bands are associated with vertical motion, and some of them are mapping out rising motion, and some of them mapping out sinking motion. It may be that the rising motion is, happens at one level, and the sinking motion happens at the same bands, but at a different level. They won't find out until the Juno mission in 2011 looks through the top layer of Jupiter's atmosphere to see just how the planet is spinning. Is it all spinning as one solid body like the Earth does? And, and, and what we see on the surface is just a bunch of clouds, a surface meteorological layer? Or is, is it inside a little bit like an onion where there's different layers and each layer is spinning in a different direction and at a different speed? We don't actually know that answer. Juno will orbit Jupiter 32 times, each lasting 11 days. The orbits will pass over Jupiter's north and south poles, shifting longitude with every flyby to scan a new section of the planet. For the first time, Juno will map Jupiter's entire atmosphere down to a depth of 350 miles. Jupiter's vast weather systems may finally yield their secrets. Scientists now realize that the planet's fast rotation maintains Jupiter's long-lived storms. But more importantly, it also drives Jupiter's most powerful force, its magnetic field. And we can study that system and compare it with what goes on at Earth and uh, learn a lot that will help us understand Earth as well. The Earth's magnetic field is generated by the churning motion of molten iron around the core. Jupiter is made of gas, but at its core, the hydrogen is so compressed, it acts like liquid metal. The magnetic field is, is created deep down in the planet where the pressures are so great that the hydrogen in Jupiter has become metallic. It actually behaves like a metal. And so it's moving around and currents are being created. And these manifest themselves out into the magnetic field that surrounds the planet. The metallic hydrogen churning in Jupiter's core creates an incredibly powerful magnetic field around the planet. It stretches across the solar system to Saturn and beyond, holding in its grasp charged particles and gases. It's enormous, 50 to 100 times Jupiter's size in, uh, going across, and the tail is dragged out by the solar wind all the way back to Saturn's orbit. Jupiter's magnetic field is the largest object in the solar system. If we could see it from Earth with the naked eye, it would appear larger than our moon. It's also strong enough to divert the constant stream of sulfur emitted from the huge volcanoes on Jupiter's closest moon, Io. 
This material also funnels down toward Jupiter's poles, creating a breathtaking light display. Like Earth, Jupiter has northern and southern lights called auroras. For the first time, Juno will analyze the charged particles and magnetic fields that create these huge displays. We're flying close, we'll dive underneath the radiation belts and out the other side. And we'll fly through the charged particles that bombard and light up the atmosphere with the northern aurora. The team hopes the study of Jupiter will yield a better understanding of the dynamic processes that create Earth's own magnetic field. But the Jovian system has other secrets to offer. Its moons are not cold and inactive, but dynamic worlds that may hold the answer to the ultimate question, is there life beyond Earth? The Jovian system is immense. 63 moons orbit the planet, some large enough to be planets in their own right. They are also an enigma. Small planets and moons usually cool faster, so how can these moons be so hot and geologically active now? The answer may also contain a clue to the holy grail of science. Is there life on other worlds? The four largest moons are Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Each one is profoundly different and holds incredible surprises. Where every time Ganymede goes around once, Europa goes around twice, and Io goes around four times. It's not a coincidence. These moons have evolved into this wonderful cosmic dance. Astronomers had expected Jupiter's moons to be cold, dead lumps of rock and ice. What Galileo finds are active, dynamic worlds. First stop, the mysterious Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. If it orbited the Sun instead of Jupiter, astronomers would call it a planet. These NASA images show its mountains, valleys, craters, and frozen lava flows. Almost immediately, the team finds something extraordinary. Galileo's magnetometer is picking up unexpected readings. I was flabbergasted. The evidence right there that there was a magnetic field uh, caused me to say, I don't believe it. Ganymede is the only moon in the solar system with its own magnetic field. But it's a puzzle. The moon should be frozen solid. If Ganymede's got a magnetic field, it must have a molten core. People had thought that a body of the size of Ganymede would have cooled off so much in the four billion years that the solar system has been around that it would have been solid all the way through. So we had to change our view of the evolution of Ganymede. The discovery of Ganymede's magnetic field only deepens the mystery of how planets form. Something must have happened in Ganymede's past, something catastrophic enough to have heated up this moon. Galileo showed us that Ganymede is a fascinating world, one that's gone through a very complex history, a world in its own right. But as well as detecting Ganymede's normal magnetic field, Galileo finds a second varying field. That's telling us that it's probably also a liquid water ocean within Ganymede. Scientists suspect this ocean is buried deep beneath the moon's rocky crust. The team is eager to investigate, but Galileo's orbit means it must leave Ganymede and move on. More surprises await. Next, the outermost of Jupiter's four largest moons. Callisto has its own mysteries. It's cold and rocky. The oldest and most heavily cratered landscape in the solar system. Its surface is scarred with ancient meteorite impacts. Scientists are perplexed by craters with strange bright rims. 